Well, that works. Uh, for our next talk, the, we have Igor Berkic, who will be telling us about Hage Term. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, Hage HG Term, a small Raspberry Pi powered handheld computer. So, yeah. oh, hi. Uh, so, the, this is it. I'm Igor, and uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, HG term. It's a uh, small ha handheld computer. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, term is because it's like a terminal device, and HG is prefix I put in front of everything because my site is hyperglitch, so it's just like that. So, uh, who am I? I'm a software and hardware engineer. Uh, maker, musician, stuff like that. And uh, in my spare time, I like to uh, build different kind of stuff. And uh, uh, I find I found the Raspberry Pi computer pretty, uh, pretty cool, pretty interesting device. And also in my day job, I work with the Raspberry Pi. So uh, yeah, I have I have a lot of them lying around. So um, long. A long time ago, I came to an idea to build myself self some small computer. There are some commercial available, but I had some specific choices. Uh, why would I no do that? Uh, because uh, from time to time, I do some installation project uh, or something, some hardware-based device, which is placed at some location. And when anything happens, then I need to take my laptop, unplug it from the monitor, keyboard and stuff and come there and try to bug it. And it would be so cool to have a small device which I can fit in my pocket and uh, take to the site and uh, reprogram the Arduinos, uh, Raspberry Pis and stuff like that. So uh, some use cases for this device is in the field device debugging, firmware flashing, but it also can be used uh, as a gaming device, as a software synthesizer, as a general purpose gadget. So it's a small device, you can see it's like a normal smartphone, but a bit bigger. <laughs> and uh, I will here. I will. It's nothing too complex, but I will here just explain uh, my build building process and some interesting things I had in that process. So uh, some existing devices also exist. Uh, one of them is this. Uh, I skipped one. Oh. I'm missing one slide. So this is, there is uh, one called node term, which is a bit bigger than this one, and th there's this one. Uh, they're cool devices, they're small, quite smaller than this, but the problem with them is that they have a quite small battery, which can last for two, three hours, and it's not a thing for me, because when, the, when I need to uh, work with it in the field, I want to place it and it, so it can give me a long better life. So I can uh, work on it for a few hours, five, ten hours or something like that. So these are the specs I wanted to have. So I wanted a long better life, at least five to ten hours. Uh, I wanted a high resolution screen with capacitive touch because, yeah, it's easier to use. Uh, some GPIO pins. Uh, to handle uh, connecting uh, external stuff, uh, serial port, uh, real-time clock to handle time. Uh, sound uh, would be a nice thing, SD card reader would be very useful. And uh, like uh, normal power management, so if I cl click shutdown, it shuts down, it, and not, not that I get this. Uh, so um, I started like this. I basically have a bunch of pictures in my presentation. So uh, I chose a Raspberry Pi 3 because uh, there are some build projects with the Raspberry Pi 0 and it's much smaller, and, but it's uh, very weak and uh, I wanted to, I need some processing power. For example, when you need to compile something, you don't, don't want to do it on Raspberry Pi 0. I found a small uh, Bluetooth keyboard for smartphone. There is a battery underneath. And uh, for display, I went with this uh, Hyperpixel 4 uh, display from Pimoroni. It's a cool device, it's a cool display, it has 800 by 480 pixels. But the thing is, it, thing is, uh, it uses all of the Raspberry Pi's pins. So there, there aren't any left 
to use uh, for other stuff. Uh, there's just one I square C bus left, so I decided to add uh, additional small Arduino inside, which will which will be connected to, the, to that I square C bus, and which will handle the power management and uh, GPIOs and stuff like that. I wanted this to another USB serial inside, and this is the real-time clock. So, uh, to be able to make it small, I had to remove a bunch of stuff from the Raspberry Pi. Here's, the, on the left side is the modified one, on the right side is the normal one. It's, they're not the same model, this is the 3B, this is 3B+. Plus. But you can see that I removed the USB connectors, Ethernet, HDMI, camera connector, display connector, and stuff. So, to make it uh, as thin as possible. Also, you can see that I even uh, shortened the pins. So, to make it even, to get those millimeter or two extra. So, when this uh, display is connected to the Raspberry, this is all the space between. It's like five millimeters or st stuff like that. And that is the space where I plan to put everything inside because uh, the battery is big, it fits under the keyboard, and uh, yeah, I need to place, put stuff s somewhere. So let's uh, talk about power management. Because I have a lithium battery, I need some way of charging the battery and uh, sh uh, powering it on and off. So first idea was to use the power bank because it handles the battery charging, uh, voltage conversion and stuff. And I had this cool, it was Canyon or something, power bank which uh, had uh, four LEDs which show the battery status. It has a button which can be used to turn it on and off. And I figured out how to do it from the microcontroller pin so I can programmatically po power it off and on, which is cool. So, but it's a big, it's a bit too big, so I went to cut a bit around it. So, because it's power bank for f with fast charging, there are some, some of these transistors aren't needed, so I cut them off. <laughs> and uh, and uh, at this point, it was still working. And then I, I cut it a bit more to get uh, two more millimeters. So, this is the new power bank I bought. <laughs> that one wasn't working anymore. This is the new one, this is one from Xiaomi. And it turned out uh, the it also had the power button and the LED, LEDs, but uh, the power button was not exactly exactly a power button. As soon as it noticed any any small current draw, it turned itself on. So that was a dead end. But the battery from this one is really cool. It's uh, just a bit smaller than the keyboard, and it has 5,000 milliampere hours, which is great, it can give me the one cap capacity, so at least I got the battery from this one. And uh, I chose to take the Adafruit Power Boost, which is the charging circuit, which is uh, a bit bigger than, than this, but it works. <coughs> so, and uh, this display, if you can see this display, it has some flat cables around it, and it's, uh, it's quite gentle device. So if you plug it in and out like 100 times, uh, you turn it on and you see this. So the first display I bought, I broke, and yeah, there was no, there was no life for, him any, for it anymore. I had to get another one. But uh, good thing uh, with this was I had a broken display and I could abuse it till the end, uh, so I could use it for prototyping and put the real actual display at, at the end. So. So I, I don't break another one. So, so this is the, uh, as I had to uh, fit everything between the Raspberry and the display. This is the some initial, initial layout. This here is the Adafruit's uh, power, power charger, power boost. This is the Arduino Pro Mini. <coughs> Here's the USB serial and the real-time clock. It's the PRTC from Adafruit. Uh, it's a bit tricky because uh, there are some still some device, some chips on the Raspberry, so I cannot just place it. I need to find a place where there is enough space for this. So. And after first, after some wi wiring, we get this. So <coughs> I added the expansion board with the protection resistors for the, the GPIOs and connected everything with it. Uh, there's a bunch of wires, some red basking tape. <coughs> 
and uh, and that's it. And uh, the important thing, because uh, Raspberry Pi 3 is a powerful device, it heats up. So I need a way to cool it down a bit. Uh, in the local shop called Chipoteca, I found these uh, copper, uh, adhesive copper boards, like heat sinks, which are cool. I, uh, uh, st I stuck two of them on the main CPU, which <coughs> this is not this is not uh, for cooling. This is just to increase the thermal capacity because there is no airflow inside. So I had to st add some sort of cooling. So I decided to put a uh <coughs> piece of aluminum on the back side of the screen. This is it, and uh, on the other side used uh, this uh, thermally co thermally conductive silicon thing, which is used in gaming PCs, to get some uh, heat conductivity between the Raspberry board and, the, and this aluminum device. So, aluminum, piece of aluminum. So, uh, this is the <coughs> temperature measurement uh, across six minutes. Uh, it's not perfect, but we can see that uh, I start, I uh, start the process with, which takes all four cores to the 100%, and uh, the temperature starts at 50, this is an idle temp temperature, and after six minutes it gets to 73 degrees and pretty much stays there, which is not the best thing, but it's, it will not burn out, it will not uh, throttle the CPU. And uh, the uh, interesting thing, these uh, down spikes, at the moments when I touched the plate to see how warm it is, so I cooled it a bit, we, get, we see that in the data. So, this is the new, uh, I confirmed it works, and this is the new display, so I s re replaced the red masking tape with the black one to make it look more cool, and uh, started uh, the same process again with the working display, but this time much more careful. Okay. Uh, this is the new device, uh, new prototype with everything <coughs> connected back. And when uh, that's when that's plug plugged together, we get something like this. It looks quite cool. It's thin. Everything is in between, and it works. Uh, <coughs> this is the schematic of the complete system. Uh, it's nothing comp complex. It's just off-the-shelf parts connected together, but with few of these resistors for power management, for measuring the battery life, and these are two for power management. And uh, I had to some put those resistors somewhere. Uh, the, the GPIO ones are <coughs> on this small board. <coughs> so why, I said, why, why shouldn't I put them directly on the pins? So here it is. <coughs> These are the zero A05 resistors directly on the power boost board, which handle the power management. And uh, for the battery life, me battery voltage me measurement, I used the 0603 resistors directly on the Arduino. So these two here, they're quite tiny, but yeah, it works. Uh, and uh, <coughs> after, after some external wiring, here's the system uh, connected with the first boot, uh, first normal boot and uh, it works. So yeah, that, that was the revelations that it works. So now onto the next part. Now I need uh, some sort of case for it. Uh, I designed the whole case in the FreeCAD. <coughs> uh, in the FreeCAD, this, these are the few angles. This is the, like exploded case, all the all the components like uh, battery and keyboard case, uh, screen cover, and stuff like that. Uh, the case is 3D printed. The, the all files are currently <coughs> available online. I will write some detail detailed instructions for them in one of these days. And <coughs> now here's the connection process, like battery, putting everything in, in, the, in the enclosure, some wiring, I added the switch for the battery, so I can, I have the hard switch to disconnect the battery completely, okay, in some case, so. But it's a bit big switch, so it doesn't align perfectly, but it's quite good. So uh, this, is f uh, this is the first boot on the completely assembled device, and uh, because of the cool hinge uh, 
I designed with multiple parts, it's sort of a double hinge. It has two standing modes, it has like normal like tablet mode and it has this mode. So when you're just reading something or gaming, you can put it this way. Uh, so, uh, I have the device here, it's working. It's working, uh, so you c anyone can try it later after the show, but uh, I will not present anything on it because it's too small, but I have a few videos showing it, how it works. <coughs> uh, the thing, the main reason for it was uh, some flashing Arduinos in the field, so <coughs> we have the, uh, the USB serial inside. Uh, <coughs> it has the, Ar uh, the whole Arduino IDE inside, but I like to use the platform IO, which is which can also flash Arduino, so this is a, just some demo of blinking LEDs and I will change the <coughs> something, uh, the blink in interval, save it, it's v Vim editor, uh <coughs> run the upload command and uh, shortly after the board will start to blink. There's also this, and uh, da -da -da, done. It blinks, so <coughs> flashing Arduino works. That's a good thing. Another demo is uh, uh, this is the ULX 3S board, which uh, Goran and Davor just presented. Oh, it it can also be flashed from the device. Uh, I had uh, I installed the whole open source FPGA toolchain on. On the, on the device, so here's some just simple counter demo. Uh, here's the Verilog program. It just counts some bits. <coughs> and I will start the compiling process now. It takes a bit of time. So, and this is compiling, it's synthesizing. Done and now I'll run the upload process. It's um, it's usable if you really need to use it, you can use it, but it's actually quite slow for actual use. So it can be used in the field for emergency situations, but not for a normal development device. And this is the upload process. So uh, I haven't said anything about the software. It runs the classic uh, Raspbian operating system. I replaced the open box uh, window manager with i3 because uh, it's easier to handle. I also added, uh, wrote a script to have, uh, to have it so I can change the display brightness. I had created the widget for showing the battery status in the, in the panel, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, we, we can use it for some useful stuff, but uh, what can else we use it for? For example, this, we, for the good stuff, yeah. For the, so, this is it, we can uh, take the gamepad, connect it to it, and uh, turn the USB on the wrong side. First. So, since the emulation station, the emulation software runs in the frame buffer, I s I'm switching it to the frame buffer, running the emulation, st emulation station. And now it's the game time, so we can switch it in the other mode. Uh, I messed up with the camera exposure, so the picture is not the best, but. So I'm, I will select the PlayStation. Uh, I should have sped up this video a bit, but uh, I can run it faster maybe. So we see the this Crash Bandicoot, which we can play like it's a regular PlayStation One emulation. 
with this in Google. You can play it in Twerk. It, it, it actually looks quite nice. If anyone wants to try it later, I, I think I have the gamepad here. But uh, we can emulate some other game like uh, Nintendo. This is the Nintendo. Where is I will speed it up. Go to Super Nintendo. So play Contra on it, which is cool. Uh, so uh, to finalize up, uh, these are the this is the list of components. Hyper uh, blah blah blah. And uh, conclusion, uh, I really like the device. It's cool. It's a bit too big and heavy, but uh, yeah. Uh, in the end, I uh, didn't get the sound working because uh, I have I have the I. I'm planning to build build in the USB sound inside because the standard uh, sound output from Raspberry Pi is uh, awful. But uh, that's the plan to build to st stick in somewhere the USB sound card inside. Uh, I also I will try to add the SD card reader because that's a useful thing. And uh, the thing is, this is the Bluetooth keyboard, so it goes into some power save mode, so whenever I need to use it, after if the more than minute passes, I have to wait until it wakes up. But I saw it has some uh, uh, pins, ex exposed pins on the inside, so maybe I can hack it to make it a wired one. But yeah, this this is okay for now. So basically, most of this could be done with the smartphone and some sort of USB serial. Uh, uh, serial converter, but uh, yeah, this, this was fun to do, and all the files are here, every, all the code, and uh, thank you. <laughs> so if you, if you have any questions, I'm open to them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, Wi-Fi works uh, great. I removed the Ethernet connector because I don't really need it and it's huge, but Wi-Fi works great. So. How long did it take to complete the process? Complete. Uh, how long did it take to complete the process? Well, um, I started it a long time ago because I could work on it only on weekends for a few hours. And um, the most of the time took took on the design, design of the enclosure because I had to print a lot of times to make sure everything fits. But uh, I've been working on it for the last two months or something like that. I, I applied for this talk, so I, I after that I had to finish it. I finished it. <laughs> I finished it yesterday, but I, there are still still some still some parts of the code which needs to be need to be done. So I plan to do it, and I plan to do some additional documentation. So, yeah. Uh, any more questions? So what is the cost of the components? Cost of the components. Uh, Raspberry Pi is like. Uh, Raspberry Pi, I don't know. Hyperpixel is like some forty-five dollars or fifty, and th that's the most expensive part. Uh, the keyboard is twenty dollars, and the other, the battery from the power bank is hundred kuna, and other stuff are cheap if you're getting them. Like RTC is a few dollars, and the uh, power boost is maybe ten dollars. It's not a really cost efficient, but it was a fun thing to do, so. Did you change the name for a few sockets in the case? Yeah, the, the, the chart was uh, in, the oh, in the case. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else? So, thank you very much. I will be around if you want to try it, check it, see it, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.